This will be a relatively quick computer session. Last time we saved a three-dimensional spatially variant lattice to an STL file. We've just opened Blender and what we're going to do is load that in. We will stack a few unit cells vertically and render the lattice and we'll also export it as a as a, a, a new single STL file that has several unit cells tall. Okay, so we open up Blender, we get a splash screen, we just click to the side, it's gone. Blender always gives us a default square, so we'll delete that. Now we'll go over to File, we'll go down to Import, and then over and down to STL. Now what we'll do is we'll navigate to where we have the STL file in my case I have it stored on the desktop and we created this svlattice3d.stl so I'll go over and click on import STL and there is our STL file now one thing just for cosmetics we will we see the faceting on the surface we actually see the little triangles and the lighting if that bothers you over on the left as long as we have the tool tabs clicked we can go down to smooth and it smooths that out. Um, I'll go back to flat just to see the faceting, but uh, but there's our lattice. One thing we might want to do is shrink it down a little bit. And if we press the letter S, now we're in the scale mode, and we can shrink it down to whatever we want to. So I'll click the left mouse button, and there we are. Okay, now what we want to do is stack this on top of itself. And maybe we want something that's five unit cells thick. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll click on this wrench symbol, which is the modifiers tab. And there's an array function. Now if we zoom out, notice it has arrayed this in the horizontal direction. We, we don't want that. And that's because over here we're telling it to space it by one relative offset in the X direction so we'll type a zero in there so no more array we want to go in the Z direction with a relative offset of one and that automatically looks at how tall the file is and we'll space it exactly one and so now we can look at this and we've stacked two unit cells on top of each other and let's go up to uh, let's say five so now we have a three-dimensional lattice that is seven unit cells wide in one direction, seven unit cells wide in the other direction, and five unit cells tall in the vertical direction. And we could hit apply at this point if we're happy with that. And there is our three-dimensional lattice. Um, if we wanted to save that as a single STL file, this new larger lattice, we would go down to export STL as long as we have our lattice selected and let's navigate to where we're storing all of these and let's name it the same name we have before but we'll name it with an underscore stacked and what we've done is exported that now as a three-dimensional STL file with five unit cells stacked that's something we could load into our 3D printer or a variety of other CAD packages to do things with. The other thing we'll do here is we'll look at rendering this. And if we come out, we see this icon over here, the little pyramid looking thing. That's our camera. And it's looking right at our lattice. And if we press zero, I don't have a full keyboard here, so maybe we'll go down to view and we will select camera and that gives us a view of the lattice from the camera's perspective so um, if we want to adjust where the camera is looking at it we'll press N and we'll check this box that says lock camera view now when we rotate we're actually orbiting the camera around the device to get a good view and maybe we like this view and we can roll the mouse zoom in and out this rendering window is a little bit wider than we would like it. We'll click on this camera icon over here 
And down here, X and Y is how wide and tall this window is. So let's set the X direction to 1080. Now we can come over here and zoom in on our lattice a little bit. And as long as that's all contained in this window, I think we're good. Okay, let's click on the world icon and let's give it a background color of white. And let's just try rendering and see what happens. Click on the render button. And maybe in this view, we don't like the faceting. And also notice the direction that the light is coming in. It's maybe not convenient to see into the lattice. So let's fix all that. We'll go over here and click on smooth. That gets rid of the faceting. Let's come out of the camera view and I don't know, we'll look at it at a front view. So we're no longer looking through the camera, but we'll zoom out. Here's our light source. And if we want to peer down into the lattice, what we can do is move this behind the source. So and then we'll look at it vertically. So that looks pretty good. It's behind the source. And we can try rendering it again. And that looks like a pretty good lattice. Let's see if we can make it the ugly MATLAB green. So we'll click on the object with the right mouse button. We'll come over to this brown looking world. That's the materials. And we'll assign a new material type. And the diffuse color is the, the color that will look like. Let's go over to ugly MATLAB green. There's a lot of parameters we can control here, but let's just see what our ugly green looks like. Um, we'll do one other thing just to be fancy. Let's make the lattice a little bit transparent. So we can come down here on the materials tab and there's a transparency button. We'll click that and there's an alpha parameter here. As long as this is set to one, the object will be completely opaque. If it's set to zero, it'll be completely transparent and anywhere in between is something else. Let's just try 0.5 and render it. So that's kind of neat. And in Blender we can control the reflectivity. There's a whole bunch of, of parameters. There's materials models available online that people have already come up with. So you could render your lattice as if it were made out of gold or silver or wood or brick or a variety of other things. If I was generating a picture here for a publication I probably would not have the transparency turned off. Well, I would just turn that off. Um, I might not like the ugly green color. Um, usually grayish colors look better. So let's just go ahead and try that. Let's make it a grayish blue. So we'll come over to a strong blue and then we'll move over towards white a little bit. And then we can make this a little bit darker. bit more towards white. So grayish colors tend to look a little bit better. Let's give this a try. So we have a nice grayish blue. Uh, maybe I'd brighten that up, but you get the idea. So Blender is a great tool for manipulating STL files and particularly rendering. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this computer session to, to animate, but we could animate this spinning in a circle or, or all kinds of crazy things. So that is it for all of these computer sessions. You should now be able to generate two-dimensional, three-dimensional lattices, bring them into Blender, stack them, manipulate them, create pictures, export as STL files, and uh, really you're just about fully equipped on spatially variant lattices. Thank you very much.